Let me mention a couple other scenarios. One is where you are getting a DPX plate from the client and there hasn't been any color work on it. They're in the display referred workflow and they tell you that therefore their color space is Rec 709 and you set it therefore to Rec 709 in Nuke and it looks washed out like this which is probably how they see it as well. If we switch this over to RAW It looks worse because now we have the basically the original footage with this display on top of it, which does brighten it. It's meant to brighten from the linear, which is darker. So that's not right. And what you basically need to do is figure out what camera this was made with. And there are then in here under input camera, there's color spaces for Ari camera, for RED camera, there's a few for Sony, a few for Canon, and then we have just the general log film scan that's extremely rare these days. Most of the time you're going to have a digital cinema camera. And you can then hopefully find out from them what the camera was, and then once you do that, if I choose Ari here, because I know it's from an Ari camera, then this exactly matches what I have with my ACES. It's really hard though because with DPX the metadata doesn't say what it is. So if I look at this metadata here, there's nothing in here about the camera or the color space that it was in. And so Either they can tell you or that information is just lost and you just have to take a random guess. And that's especially hard because when you look at their reference footage, it's also in log because, again, they are in the display referred workflow and they haven't changed it. And so they send you a reference QuickTime looking like log and that honestly doesn't tell you what the camera was. That's probably okay for a VFX though, because all you really need to do is find a color space for the camera that's plausible so that you can then be doing your match lighting in a photographically plausible environment. And then you would just have to make sure that whatever you receive it in, you need to write it out in that same color space. So if I have here RE log C, then I need to come into the output transform for the right node and also choose RE log C. And that means that you're having this round trip and you're not changing anything about those pixels or those color spaces at all. All you're doing is putting your CG integrated on top of it. So I mentioned working in a plausible environment. Let me show you an example of a implausible environment. So first of all I have this footage here and I'm viewing this in RAW in the viewer and in RAW over here and then I have this footage here which you can see looks a lot more washed out. When I switch this over to the view transform here and come into here and choose the RE camera space. This looks plausible. When I come into this one and do the same thing, it does not. So if I here take this, put this into RAW. Here I'm doing a conversion from sRGB into ACES CG and then a conversion from log C RE into ACES CG. Viewing this through the ACES output transform, this again looks plausible, but what you can see has happened on this file here is that it's gotten a double color space transform. It's somewhere along the pipeline, on top of the original RE log C color space, 
they have added onto that an additional sRGB color space. And at this point, you need to send the footage back to the client and have them output it again without that mistake in it. Finally, I want to cover a situation where you have a client who's delivering you DPX footage, therefore they are working in a non-color managed display referred workflow, but they're giving you a LUT. And that LUT, if I disable that, you know, it's it's working from the log footage, which is what they're delivering to you. If I jump here into Nuke, and we take this footage here, and we apply the LUT, it looks very, very wrong. It would look just fine if we applied it I go into raw here, if I applied it directly to the raw log footage, like they're doing, but if I instead apply it to the linear footage, it does not look fine. So we need to have a way to deal with that. And the way that we deal with that is we have this display transform called DPX shot look for display referred workflows. And there you have it. Now, again, we would need to come into the config and fill out some stuff. As before, you gotta fill out the LUT path and the LUT name to point to the client LUT. But then in addition to that, in the camera section, you need to put in here the type of camera that your DPX footage was shot on so that you are having it sort of do a round trip here, beginning in this and then applying it here as well. You can see here I've got sort of aliases, which are a shorthand for the different types of camera, so it's a little bit easier to type in here. And let me show you what that's doing kind of under the hood so you can follow it. So we have everything here in linear, ACES CG which is the way that Nuke needs to work for compositing. And then we put everything into log format and that is the same camera log as we are using in our read node here. And then we apply the LUT and looks good. Note, of course, this is a completely different workflow from the regular shot LUT and if you try to apply a LUT that was made to be applied to log DPX footage and try to apply it here where it's assuming that you have ACES EXR footage it's going to look horrendous. So it's important to know what you have. So let's also take a look in Maya and you can see here I have the same view transform selected. In Maya, I need to select that here in the color management here under the display. And you see I have here display referred workflow and that allows you again as before to be able to see your background plate so that you can integrate your CG together with it. An important thing to be aware of is that since you are not in a scene referred workflow and you don't have the tone mapping from ACES helping you out here, it can happen that you can get some clipping. And you can see we're not getting a ton of clipping. Like if I switch this over to untone mapped, it just looks horrific. And with the LUT, it's not as bad, but it doesn't look quite as good as ACES. And so what's really important is that when you're doing your lighting work, CG work, effects work, that you don't darken the values of things in order to compensate 
for this clipping because that will mean that you would then use physically incorrect light values and that will then just kind of spiral into all sorts of problems with things not being the right physical values and then the global illumination bounce and all sorts of other things, a bouquet, won't work properly. So that's why it's a good idea, even if you're viewing this through the client LUT, to kind of go back and forth and also look at it in the ACES regular view transform.